this may be the most important lecture of the semester because we use unit conversion so much and it's so important for you to understand. So please write on the top of this page, possibly the most important lecture of the semester. And if you put it in all caps, even better. What is a conversion factor? A conversion factor converts one unit into another. And a conversion factor is based on two things that are equal. Those two things that are equal, it converts them into a fraction. And mathematically, using a conversion factor, Mathematically, I guess, mathematically multiplying times a conversion factor is like multiplying times one. which still makes it a true statement, okay? So mathematically, everything is fine. Two thumbs up for math. Um, we're using math to help us. Now, for examples, um, so of converting one unit into another, and then based on two things that are equal, we might say one meter equals 100 centimeters. Now, we're going to convert that into a fraction, and we can convert them into two possible fractions, which means we can convert them into two possible conversion factors. One hundred centimeters over one meter, or one meter over one hundred centimeters. So either of the, both of these, are conversion factors. And another common way of saying a conversion factor would be that there are 100 centimeters per one meter or one meter per 100 centimeters. Okay? And we haven't done the mathematically part yet. Um, let's do another example. So one week equals seven days. So we can convert that into seven days per week, per one week, or one week per seven days. Okay. So that's the step. So, and we'll do this over and over and over again. Um, so, uh, and end up with what these are. These are our conversion factors that we can then use to do math. Some common conversion factors. So uh, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. And that is exact, meaning that there are infinite sig figs 
and here I'll use the infinity symbol, infinite sig figs. Um, another one that's very common is one milliliter. equals 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liters. And if you don't like that method, you can also use 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter. Those two statements are equal to each other. Those two statements are both counted numbers and or definitions. So these ones have infinite sig figs as well. Um, other common ones, uh, I think the biggest one um, that you're going to have to memorize, well, two of them actually, is one centimeter cubed, which is also called a cubic centimeter, is one milliliter, and in the medical fields, it's sometimes called one cc for a cubic centimeter so uh, 500 cc's stat <laughs> uh, um, that's uh, 500 cubic centimeters so 500 milliliters all right so memorize that and also memorize the density of water because we use it as a conversion factor frequently in this and all chemistry courses and this is a measured quantity. The density of water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. That is measured. So it has three sig figs. And uh, when you get uh, we may we we may use this number too. Actually, I think we will. For um, if we need it more precise than that, there are more sig sig figs available. If you need it at a specific temperature, most of the time we will not. Um, another example of a common conversion factor is the speed limit. For example. You can drive at 60 miles per hour. Well, I'm going to do 65 because I don't like trailing zeros. Sixty-five miles per hour can also be expressed as sixty-five miles per one hour. And uh there are definitely spots on Highway 50 where you can drive 65 miles per hour, and um, that's the speed limit. Now, what we're saying is that sort of we have this uh, conversion factor, and we can actually break it apart into an equal statement. 65 miles of distance equals one hour of travel time. So we can go back and make it into an equal statement as well. But typically, um, you'll keep it like the conversion factor where it's given to you. So now let's do some actual calculations using unit conversion factors. We're going to do some non-chemistry ones first, then in, uh, later on we'll get to the chemistry ones. How many days are there in 16.4 weeks? So. The, convert, the style of calculation that I do um, is called the picket fence, though it's also sometimes called the railroad tie um, or the railroad lines. So it goes like this, and this is going to be a picket fence with one picket in it. And you put the number from the problem statement, which is your given number, on the top left. And then that's, so this is my given number. And it's the starting point for solving the problem. And we're lucky in this one, we're starting off with just one number in the problem. 
But from there, uh, 16.4 weeks. Uh, oh, and then I guess I will have two pickets because above and below and between the two pickets is where your unit conversion factor goes. And remember, all a unit conversion factor is, is two things that are equal to each other. Because they're equal to each other, it's like this is equal to one. And so multiplying anything times one still makes it a true statement. So um, from the previous slide, two slides ago, we had seven days, oops, seven days per week or one week per seven days. Let's see here. Good. So we have weeks in the top here. We need to choose this conversion factor because that'll put weeks on the bottom and days on top. And we're being asked for how many days. one week per seven days, seven days per one week. We can, and I love doing this, because I part units. At least one of my cameras is keeping up. Uh, units of weeks cancel. That leaves me with an answer that's in days. And multiply the numbers across the top. 16.4 times 7, I get 114.8 days. Now, if we're thinking of sig figs, and we often do, uh, so let's say this. If you're putting this into the learning management system, 114.8 is a fine answer because that's all the digits on the calculator. Now, um, if you're doing this with correct sig figs, or remember I told you to write down on one of your previous lecture outlines that all exams, lecture outlines, and homeworks will also take just three sig figs. We can round this to three sig figs and still be right as well. We would round up to 115 days. Now, how many kilometers are there in 1.37 times 10 to the minus third meters? So memorizing your metric prefixes is something that we've talked about before, knowing them. Uh, so here's our given. And my abbreviation for given is going to be G. 1.37 times 10 to the minus third meters. Then make your picket fence, save some room for your unit conversion factor. And my unit conversion factor is going to be that uh, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters or one times 10 to the third meters. Those are the same thing, just using scientific notation or not. I've got meters on the top, I need to convert it into a unit conversion factor with meters on the bottom. I'm just going to use this 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. And so now what I have to do is I have to do, oh, I have my final unit. And this time I have to divide this unit conversion factor here, and I should have mentioned that up above, has infinite sig figs. So uh, my final answer will have three sig figs as well. Take your 1.37 exponent three minus uh, divided by 1000, and you should get 1.37 times 10 to the minus six. 
and net as units of kilometers. Pretty much, can I say this again? All numbers in this course have units and I heart units. Some unit conversion problems require more than one conversion factor. I'm going to do the top one here. How many microliters are there in 3.43 milliliters? Now this seems like a good point to say, and please write this on the top of your slide. You can solve the problem any way you like, and there are often multiple ways. So all you have to write is, you can solve the problem any way you like. Further, um, you just have to show your work. And as long as I can see your work, you're good. Thumbs up. Uh, and the reason I mention this now is because there is a way to do this with one conversion factor. I am going to do it with two conversion factors. Start with your given. Three point four three milliliters. I remember that one milliliter equals one times ten to the minus three liters, and that one micro of anything, but also one microliter, equals one times ten to the minus six liters. Stack up my picket fence. This time, save room for two unit conversion factors. I've got milliliters on top here. I need to cancel my milliliters out. So my milliliters goes on the bottom and my liters on top. Now I know that I want microliters for my final answer. So my next one's going to use this one, and I'm going to have liters on the bottom and microliters on top. Like so. And then I can cancel my milliliters, I can cancel my liters, and so many times I've gotten answers right, well not so many, but certainly a number. I've gotten answers right just because I canceled my units. So think about that. Canceling units, it can be your friend. It has certainly been my friend. All right. So uh, my units will be microliters. Now that's what I want, so I'm just going to multiply now. 3.43. Times one exponent third minus divided by one exponent six minus. And I get 3,430. Microliters, which to proper sig figs should be 3.43 times 10 to the minus, times 10 to the plus third, excuse me, microliters. I will leave number two for you to do. Please do it and put it in your notes so that I can look at it. And then we have a couple more problems. Yep. Um, some unit conversion problems have conversion factors in the problem statement. And this one actually has in the problem statement and a given one. So, um, because I don't expect you to memorize this unit conversion. A good place to start with these is always by reading them aloud. That's what I do. How many gallons of wine were consumed at the wedding if 17 bottles were consumed? Each bottle is 7.50 times 10 to the second milliliters. All right, and this problem, so... We need to know, so, oh, um, we are looking for gallons. So this is our wanted. And I'm going to put gallons all the way over here. Blank gallons. And 17 bottles is my given. And I know that's my, well, uh, let's talk about this is statement here. 
is in math, it means equals most of the time. So if you see the word is, you can set equals, and so that means one bottle equals 750 milliliters, which is 7.50 times 10 to the second milliliters. That's what I mean by a unit conversion problem is in the problem statements. The word is means equals. On this page, please write up here, and I'm going to do it too. So of typically means multiply. And is there anything else? I think that's it. Um, sorry, I'm going to check my notes for just a second here. Ah, and we already did per. Per means divide by. So now we have three English words. That's why reading them helps me. Reading them helps me to translate it into the math. All right, so way over here, I have my given, which is going to be 17 bottles. I don't know how long this is going to be, but let's just make it go all the way. Are there three... Oh yeah, I think there are three sig figs for this one. Um, we've nailed down two of them. So we've got, uh, for this first one, we've got a relationship between bottles and milliliters. And we've also got a relationship between gallons and liters. But the thing that's missing so far, and I always like to just set these up. So one bottle equals 7.50 times 10 to the 2 milliliters. All right, so my units of bottle or bottles cancels. Now I don't have anything that relates milliliters to anything else, but I see that I want liters here as well. And I know my relationship between milliliters and liters. I've memorized it. So my next one is going to be one milliliter equals one times 10 to the minus three liters. And then 3.785 liters equals one gallon. So a lot of these problems are like little puzzles where you're trying to figure out how to get from your starting point to your ending point which is a little bit like playing Candyland when I used to do that with as a child or more recently with our daughter, um, except there's no candy so far. But uh, when you finish your homework, I highly recommend some sort of treat. When you finish the lecture outlines, um, some sort of little treat uh, to help you keep going. Uh, I know that's one of the things that I'm going to do after making this lecture outline. All right, so I've got my setup here. Let me move the page up a little bit and see if I can fit my calculator on here as well. 17 bottles times 7.5 exponent 2 times 1 times 10 to the 3 minus divided by 3.785. I get 3.37, I don't know, I got 17 bottles, that's a counted number. I've got three sig figs here, I've got four sig figs here. These are counted numbers or definitions as well. Just like always, your answer is gonna have three sig figs in it, 3.37. Gallons of wine. And please do complete this as part of your notes, and then you're done with this part.